to be a great chef, I think it's important to understand the whole business and to see that dish. Yes, I can create a great dish, but if it's not, if you can't execute it, and you can't, and what's the guest reaction, and is it profitable, and does it work, and is it fit the concept? And there's so many things that go into, you know, developing a menu or a new concept that I. I I encourage and push all of our chefs and you know the, our regional and corporate chefs to, to really understand our business and what impact they can have on that. Thanks for joining me back on the podcast. This episode is all about the importance of culture and developing your people from within. I'm speaking to a fast-growing restaurant group in Columbus that is really developing their people from the ground up, maintaining the guest value proposition, solving their labor challenges, and literally promoting people from within. It's awesome. 80% of their managers started out in hourly positions, and there's so much to learn here, so you're not going to want to miss this episode. Thanks to the sponsors of this week works pop menu smithfield culinary and serve the restaurant training app now on with the episode you're tuned in to the restaurant rock stars podcast powerful ideas to rock your restaurant here's your host roger bodwin Restaurant owners and managers, listen, this is important. If you haven't heard of the employer retention credit, your business can receive lots of money back from the IRS, money you've already paid in payroll taxes. Now, the ERC program, as it's known, is available if your operation had fewer than 500 employees, you had to shut down or partially suspend your business, or you had at least a 20% reduction in business due to COVID-19 in any quarter of 2020 and the first three quarters of 2020. Now, how much is the credit? Up to $7,000 back per employee per quarter for 2021 and up to $5,000 per employee in 2020. Listen, if you have 10 employees today and meet the requirements, you could receive up to $260,000 back in a refundable tax credit. Now, the faster you apply, the faster you get the cash. Think of it as found money that you can use for any purpose, payroll, cost of goods, business improvement, or other business expenses. Again, best of all, you do not need to pay this money back. Now, Works is a company that will do all the heavy lifting for you and get your business back the money that's due. I'm speaking from experience here with Works. I received a sizable amount back in all available quarters from my former restaurant, and I couldn't be more pleased with their service, their people, and their process. For a no-obligation consult, click the link for Works in the show notes to this episode. Don't miss out. Get your consult today. Rock stars. Restaurants have been hit hard the last few years, which means restaurant owners and staff are working harder than ever. Trying to meet the demands of in-person hospitality can be really demanding, which is why I recommend Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering turns every phone call into an opportunity. It uses artificial intelligence to answer the simple questions that are tying up your phone lines, like, can I make a reservation? Or, where are you located? And over 50% of restaurant guests are happy to have their questions answered by an automated system. Within the Pop Menu platform, you can customize answers for your restaurant and choose the voice your guests hear, and even send follow up links via text message. Pop Menu Answering picks up your phone 24 7, 365 days a year, allowing you and your team to focus on what matters most pleasing your guests. Prevent lost customers and impress your guests with Pop Menu Answering. And for a limited time, my listeners can get $100 off their first month plus lock in one unchanging monthly rate at popmenu.com forward slash rockstars. Go now to get $100 off your first month and learn more about Pop Menu's full collection of tools at popmenu.com forward slash rockstars. Rock on. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Restaurant Rockstars podcast. With me today, I'm super excited to introduce Mr. Chuck Klein. He is the Senior Vice President of Operations for Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, a really dynamic group of concepts based in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to the show today, Chuck. How are you? I'm doing great, Roger. Thanks for having me. I'm Appreciate super happy to have you as a guest. You know, I get some really amazing guests that have been in this business a long, long time. They clearly have a passion for great restaurants. You are no exception. Where did it all begin for you, Chuck? 
Yeah, I uh, come from a long line of family members that were great chefs and uh, good cooks themselves. So that was the original motivation. Um, always was drawn to it, right? Um, got my start in a local deli here in Columbus um, back uh, when I was about 16 years old. A little place called Vincenzo's uh, Convenient Elegance. It's a little Italian deli, all homemade stuff and I spent a couple summers uh, working and, and learning how to, uh, the basic skills, how to make bread, how to chop onions, that kind of thing. You know, it, it, uh, it caught my attention, you know, so um, got some advice from, from some people and uh, traveled around, visited some culinary schools, you know, did that, looked through some things and, and actually uh, found a really great program here in Columbus, uh, the Columbus State uh, Community College at the time. Uh, was a pretty well-known uh, apprenticeship program, and that's really what launched my my whole career. I got a, a job in a really great restaurant here, a, a French fine dining restaurant by the name of the Refectory. Mm -hmm. uh, trained under a really talented chef, uh, Richard Blondin, uh, right from Lyon, France. Um, and was classically trained, so got a really great start. Um, learned all the basics and. And that really propelled me um, and prepared me to come to Cameron Mitchell restaurants at the time. You know, so I uh, I worked at the refectory for five years. So um, you spent a lot of your time in the back of the house working in the kitchen. I did. I yeah. I started out actually as a chef. So uh, in the company, and I used to be the uh, corporate chef for Cameron Mitchell restaurants, um, and then evolved into the total operations role. So. Yeah, you know, that's a really interesting transition because obviously pride, passion, all those things really run deep. And when you love to cook, I mean, you really love to cook. It's about creativity. It's about resourcefulness. It's about the the relationships you build among the different positions in your kitchen. It's about nurturing and bringing people up and teaching your skills and encouraging them and inspiring them. And then all of a sudden you do this transition to the business side of things. Do you miss mm -hmm. cooking? Do you still have an opportunity to cook at home? Where do you get rid of that that creative bent that you must have? I mean, how do you release that and not miss it? Yeah, sure. Well, the beauty of this company is uh, we're a chef-driven, you know, really culinary-focused company. So I'm heavily involved in all the menu development, um, all the new concept development, all those things I'm involved in. So I actually, what's cool about it is I get to cook kind of what I want to cook. You know, That's uh, so great. I'm, I, I'm still involved in it. Uh, still, uh, still learning, uh, watch, watch cooking shows, mm -hmm. read trade magazines, still love reading cookbooks and, you know, and, and that type of thing. So I think it's really important. And we teach that, uh, you, you, I always wanted to run the whole business, you know, sometimes chefs, you know, we are artistic, uh, a special breed, you know, it's for sure. Bit, right. A little bit, uh, different mindset from time to time, but it's one of like problem solving and, creativity not only on the food that's going on the plate but how to solve problems how to fix things on the restaurants and how to think outside the box and adapt to our surroundings and we're very durable restaurant people in general are very durable people yeah resilient for sure you know yeah. you have some beautiful concepts of course and they must have beautiful kitchens do you do guest appearances randomly like just pop in and be a guest chef in your own concepts do you get to do that uh, we, we definitely visit the restaurants a lot, you know, yeah. uh, I try to spend, uh, maybe half my time here at the home office, uh, strategizing and organizing and, and try to spend half my time in the restaurants. Sure. Visiting our people, you know, that's one thing we say, yeah. we, I, we visit our people. We don't visit a restaurant mm -hmm. or a store. Sure. We visit, we're there to, you know, to visit people. And ultimately, yes, you mentioned, you know, the development aspect of it. I was developed along the way, and I want to share that with other people. Yes, I want to see young chefs grow into thing into you know great position, advance their careers. But to be a great chef, I think it's important to understand the whole business and to see that dish. Yes, I can create a great dish, but if it's not, if you can't execute it, and you can't. And what's the guest reaction? And is it profitable? And does it work? And is it fit the concept? And there's so many things that go into you know, developing a menu or a new concept, but I, I, I encourage and push all of our chefs and, you know, the, our regional and corporate chefs to, to really understand our business and what impact they can have on that. But, 
Uh, very rewarding though, being a chef. You get that instant gratification. That's probably what drew me to uh, that success, that that winning feeling, you know, uh, of seeing one of the something that we've created or an experience we've created for a guest. Put that in front of them, and see the reaction instantly. Is uh, that's that's pretty cool. That's really what drew me to it. That I can make people happy uh, with with the uh, with the art or the way that you know I, I did something or put something in front of someone. And, well, it sounds like you're making such an impact on so many levels at at Cameron Mitchell's restaurants. But we're talking about gratification. So you're gratified by the business contributions you're making. You're gratified by getting the immediate feedback from the guest experiences in your restaurants, as well as passing your skills, your knowledge, your experience onto those coming up. And it sounds like, you know, building careers versus jobs, giving people more reasons to stay within the fold. I can imagine people transferring from restaurant to restaurant and getting different flavors and different cultures of of some of your concepts and just keeping everything so so tight and part of that that real team and respect culture that I'm guessing is part of your I'm gonna ask you what your culture is later, but that's what I'm seeing just yeah. from talking to you. It's huge. It's it's been the it's been the foundation of everything that we've created here, you know, and it's really nice. Um, you can teach people basically anything, you know, but to really get them to understand and change their mentality on and, and to somewhat uh, drink the Kool Aid like we get people to do yeah. here at Cameron right. Mitchell Restaurants. You know, we call Excellent. it drink milkshake. Actually, you know, we can talk about that milkshake story a little later. But uh, all right, uh, that is definitely a big part of our success and has has uh, definitely pulled us through any of these challenging times we're all living in right now. That's for sure. Beautiful. But we're in the but people business. Yeah, you certainly, we certainly are. It's all about hospitality, and that is the foundational element of everything that we do every day and what we strive for. So I don't need to tell you that. I mean, that's just right. that's just what it is. But yeah, you're right. Pride, passion, hospitality, and, and people, and all those things come together, and relationships. It's really yeah. what it's about. It sounds simple, and uh, but it, it's pretty, it's hard to do, right? The simplest things sometimes are hard to do. Uh, so. So we'd like to try to make that look easy, but it's very challenging. You know? Let's shift gears entirely for a moment. Let's just ask about what you like to do if and when you have any spare time. What are your hobbies, your passions outside your vocation, Chuck? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, family first. I say that to everybody. You know, it's, you know mm-hmm. wonderful uh, supporting family that I would never be able to do what I do without my wife and uh, my kids' support. So. Really appreciate that. And uh, mm-hmm. we have a tight bond together, you know. Uh, and as they've grown older, uh, we try to find ways to get together. We love sports. We love going to sporting events. We're, you know, here in Columbus, Ohio, we're uh, big Ohio State Buckeye fans. I was going to say, you must be Buckeye fans. You have to be. Yeah, I have to be, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, we believe Scarlet and Gray at my house. And uh, I, that's a guaranteed, uh, I have season tickets to the game. So that's a that's a guaranteed seven or eight weekends. I know I'm going to be with my kids and my family. and that's real special to me, but uh, yeah, love to fish, love being outside. Uh, fishing is one of my passions. You know, I get to get to do that. I spend a lot of time with my brother out there fishing whenever I can. Nice. He also works for the company. He's uh, oh, he's one of the corporate chefs for our company. So uh, oh wow, we, we tried <laughs> kept that in the family too. But uh, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's yeah. excellent. Uh, big sports, big sports guy in general. Um, always wanted to be. I always thought maybe I'd be a professional baseball player or uh, realized pretty quickly that I was a little bit too small, too slow, and probably I was good, but not good enough to do that. So uh, under I, calling. Well, I use that in my everyday work. You know, not everybody responds to like sports analogies or this, but the team aspect and the uh, the depth chart, so to speak, and the development of that team. And as you said, the motivation and, and getting people excited and, creating opportunities and programs to to develop that team is, is really my passion. So, uh, but I got to tell you, there's really not a whole lot of, this is kind of how I live my life. You know, my job and CMR, Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, is, it, it's a part of my life. You know, Cameron has always said, there's no, there's no delineation between work and home. And, you know, I use these philosophies in my everyday life. And, you know, I've raised my kids to think, this way and how to treat people and so uh really 
cooking, still a passion. I do it for a living or run restaurants for a living, but, you know, still uh, cooking and having holidays at my house and and uh, having cookouts in the backyard around the pool with the family, you know, is, uh, is where it's at, you know. So, is there yeah. a typical day for you as senior VP of ops? Can you even describe a typical day? Yeah, every day is a little a little different, which is also what's really cool about it. Some people don't like that, and I, I kind of thrive off that. Yeah. It's exciting. It keeps me on my toes. Right. Uh, that's what I really like. A lot of moving parts, but but there is a typical. Everybody's got the, uh, you know, I call it uh, chopping the parsley or uh, peeling the shrimp. You know, it's a it's a job. It's a little mundane. You got to do it every day, right, to get the restaurant open. Uh, to get to do the fun stuff so get that stuff out of the way and then you focus on uh, then we can go create some fun dishes so uh every morning some uh you know one of the first things i do uh every day one first is uh look at all of our sales and our what happened the night before with our performance our sales our labor our um you can see a lot of problems or a lot of successes through that right Absolutely. in the morning so you know so that's the first place to start I usually follow that up with, uh, I review all of our guest feedback that we get every night. Um, we get that through uh, open table. We get it through open table. Feedback is no problem getting that, right? Uh, plenty of avenues to get feedback now. So, um, but I look at all those. Every comment I read every day just to see where that opportunity might, what went wrong, what happened, and what, and to praise also. So to get, to get all that information about how we performed over the last evening and that will kind of set a tone maybe for a direction I, I go to help run our business that day. Um, but I try not to get too, but we also then I have to shift and be thinking about the future, right? We have a, we have an awesome team. So I will usually touch base then with our team members, those people that report to me that I work with closely, uh, our regional directors and our regional chefs and, and we'll talk shop. You know, we'll talk about where we're at, what we're doing today, where we're at for the week, and, and talk about some of those uh, kind of low-hanging fruit items that we know we can get to. And mm -hmm. uh, But always try to then, again, think strategically and think ahead. So there will be then a part of the day where we are creating, developing. We have a lot of different concepts um, that, that we focus on every day. And we are developing new concepts that we'll be opening next year. So at some point of every day, there's some sort of what we call rollout, basically, where, you know, we'll go as a group, pretty unique process to uh, try food and try our food and beverage together. And, and we beat each other up. I mean, we put we put our egos in our back pocket and, and we go to work, you know, and if it's not great or it's not uh, really doesn't matter what I think, it matters what the group things and we're a very collaborative group so so we try to take that so at some point every day we're collaborating about our food and beverage development um and then as i said we're visiting stores you know we're visiting people in our stores uh, management development people development do you do that randomly and anonymously are people informed that you'll be visiting i mean obviously maintaining consistency and consistent guest experiences and quality and all those things are what you look for and you know some people will sort of secret shop or send secret shoppers into a restaurant some executives or managers will just show up unannounced and just catch people on the spot and praise what they see going right and obviously critique things going wrong. Some people will let people know a district manager or a, a store location saying, Hey, I'll be in on Friday. And then that gives people time to swab the deck and get everything ship shape. I mean, where do you fall into that? I'm somewhere in the middle. You know, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the sneak attack is never really great and kind of really doesn't go with our philosophy, you okay. know, if we're doing what sure. we're doing and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And uh, it's really, uh, not to say this never happened. It does happen from time to time, just to maybe confirm something. Or, uh, but for the most part, uh, they're they're fairly organized, and especially you have to do that. Especially running a national restaurant company, where I can't go into a restaurant in Florida and just show up, you know, and then they won't be ready. It wouldn't be a very productive visit. That's an expense. That's a big expense. Of course, to a it is. 
yep to, to travel, travel and i want them prepared you know so uh we will uh typically when you're doing that we'll send a some sort of uh some sort of communication hey I'm looking forward to seeing you here's what we're looking to do here's what we want to accomplish during the visit and i look forward to seeing you so they they do kind of know what's coming um now the people in columbus we have you know several restaurants here in columbus ohio so that's in my backyard so of yeah yeah, we get pop ins. So I'll pop in or I'll pop in for dinner or, uh, you know, our, our people will. Uh, but but for the most part, time is valuable. So we like it to be pretty organized and, and have a game plan and an agenda before we before we go in there. Great answer. That's what I would expect to hear. Let's yeah. talk about now you have your company has very ambitious growth plans. And I understand you plan to have 71 restaurants in the fold in a year's time by the end of 2023, hitting approximately $500 million in sales. So this is an ambitious goal, especially during these challenging times. What's it going to take to get there? It is. Yeah. Um, we have been so fortunate you know, to, uh, to come out of uh, these hard times, as you said, um, and it's the only reason we've been able to do it is our foundation has been our culture and philosophy and, and that family tie that we have here at, at Cameron Mitchell Restaurants. And, you know, uh, we're going to fight. We're not going to, we're going to, we're going to push through it. And we're going to, again, be creative and, and rely on that culture to get us to where we need to be. But we understand that we have to, uh, we have to grow. We have we have five thousand associates that work for us out there. Yeah, it's amazing. We are, we're in the people business, so we need to develop our people and create opportunities for these people. Or, or that's that's kind of how our company operates, right? We we are a we're a company that grows and develops people, and if we're standing still, that's just not how this company works. We're a cash flow business, and we're out there building sales and driving profitability every single day. Um, with the with the after effect of creating all these great opportunities. So yeah, we uh, but we operate and our uh, success kind of speaks for itself over the years. So we are getting just some really unique opportunities. Um, and it, but again, very fortunate just to be even uh, in this situation. And and a lot of it is Cameron's leadership. Uh, it's the leadership of the executive team, our president David Miller, and how he leads our executive team to. Um, to stay focused and, and and really we've all just come together as an executive team of uh, every department on that team now uh, the the camaraderie the the teamwork the, the collaboration that we do is what's going to allow us to get to the next level because let's face it I mean there's yeah it's not any easier today to run restaurants it's not getting any easier. Um, much different than when I was a chef or when I was a manager of a restaurant. A uh, little bit, a lot of different practices all the way. Uh, so, so we're navigating through some of those challenges. Oh, that's great. You know, you mentioned a keyword associates. You don't refer to your team as employees, they're associates. And I also understand that a very high percentage of your management team started off as associates, right? And they've uh, now moved up. So something special is clearly happening there. Let's talk about training and onboarding. New staff come into the Cameron uh, Mitchell restaurant fold, and they have immediate immersion in your culture, your mission statement. I'd like to get into that a little bit further uh, on in the podcast, but tell us about what's special, that secret sauce of what's happening with your people when they first start and what is it that motivates them and inspires them to continue to grow in your organization versus the high turnover that some groups have that people are leaving for opportunities elsewhere. There's something secret going on here, something really special. If you could yeah. share, that'd be great. Yeah, there is. Um, it's really, you know, come so naturally to us now over all these years. It's like, just kind of do the right thing. It's mm -hmm. like the short answer to it, which is okay. <laughs> still keeps it kind of secretive, but no, it's the, uh, it, we, we walk the walk, Roger, you know I mean? It's like, you know, all the companies you go and interview with anybody, they'll tell you, oh yeah, we treat our people great. And you know, all that stuff and everything's going to be, the benefits are amazing and it's, you're going to love it here. And well, we actually show up. You know, so the first day you come on the job, you are welcomed as one of our family members and you get a tour of the facility and you get a whole overview of what our company's about. And they'll watch a 
for a video for camera and the orientation is about a three or four hour long orientation for every associate that starts in our company. And during that orientation, you get a milkshake. So you know, that's that milk- where it comes up. I was curious about the milkshake. Yeah. So the milkshake has become yeah. the icon of hospitality and culture and in our, in our restaurants. Um, and it, it's taken off. So the milkshake is really um, the answer is yes. What's the question, right? That's our company philosophy. Is, I, like that. I really have never met a problem we can't solve. And we don't say no, really, to anything. We think outside the box. We're creative. And, and sure, sometimes that gets tested or challenged. But, you know, we, we find a way and take pride in being able to say yes and exceeding our guests and our associates' expectations. So, yeah. So the word associate, right? So, yes, they're not staff. They're not they're our partners you know that's our we don't have this hierarchy with uh, you know we will i've done every job in this company i would never ask anybody to do something i don't do myself it's uh, lead by example right there right uh there was no there are no shortcuts in this business or especially in this company but so we talk a lot of that but we instill this like sense of family uh we care about our people we I want to know where you're going on vacation. I want to know what your dog's name is. I want to know what your dreams and desires are. You know, it's it's not just about work. If we take care of our people, we have this little triangular kind of theory, right? I mean, it's uh, we're all on the same playing field, right? We're going to take care of our associates. Our associates are going to take care of our guests, and our guests are going to take care of our shareholders and the profitability will be there and the money will be there. That'll be the exhaust of doing all. We go about it a little bit different way and our associates come first. You hear a lot of uh, the guest is always right or the guest comes first, right? Well, we don't do it that way. We do it the other way. Our, our associates come first. So if we take care of our of our employees, they'll take care of the rest. You know, that's, that's kind of where uh, but the opportunity, so let's talk about, so then the longevity Please. of, yes. so now we see, so these people that are coming into our company see and start to hear these stories, my story, I started as a sous chef in the company and now 27 years later, I'm the senior VP of a soon to be $500 million company, right? Uh, so they see that and it's actually real. They can track it. They can see it. They, they see the, uh, the regional positions that come available. We talk a lot about uh, the future and you could be a future GM for us. You could be a chef for us and here's how we're gonna get you. We don't just say it, then we help them get there. So so we know what they need. So we are focused, each manager has a development plan in our company, right? So um, uh, we, we know what they're, we call them five, five, fives or, you know, you've heard different terminology for it, but We know their five uh, strengths. We know their five opportunities, things they could improve on. But we also know their five goals that they want to do. And we do those and update those every year in our business plan. So so I know uh, if someone wants to move to Florida, if someone wants to stay in Columbus, if someone wants to get into fine dining, I'm in tune to that. And then when those opportunities pop up, we'll make sure that those people are prepared. They're trained properly. That they go through... uh, associates go through uh, a really good it, it's never enough we always want more training we're actually revamping our training but that they, they go through a great training program um our managers will go through an eight-week training program that will end with uh, what we call cmr 101 so cmr 101 is just what it says is kind of the what you need to be a successful manager in your first year so you mentioned yeah that onboarding and that first part of the someone's career starting their career with us is crucial so um making sure they have the tools they need to succeed and there's so many moving parts in this business and so cumbersome from everything from the hr requirements to it you know the technologies that we're facing right Uh, so we, we really boil that down for our people and and that gets them uh they're an education. It's like they're going to school here. So we, they see that we bought into them and we're dedicated to their growth. And uh, like I said, we're not slowing down. So we, we got a bunch of restaurants coming and 
you know, we need to onboard even more people next year or onboard probably close to a thousand people next year. Mm -hmm. So everyone works for a paycheck, of course. People also work for those intangibles and other things that give them satisfaction in a job, but incentives and recognition rewards, all those things are important. You've got something called pass the plate. Can you speak to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, we, we like the, uh, we like people to, uh, get exposed to other areas of the, of the company or other departments. You know, uh, we have a, we have a big arsenal of people here, uh, in the home office. Uh, we, we find that we're, we could expose more people to that. So yes, you might have a passion for the restaurant business, but you might be interested in marketing. So someone could come to the office and you set it up through our manager. You come to the office and you would pass the plate or follow someone from marketing. And, uh, they actually pay you for your time too. So you're, you know, you get paid for your time and you get exposed to maybe something that you might be interested in, um, outside of, uh, just maybe serving a table or just working in the saute station. You know, it's like we, we want to open people's eyes up, you know, to, to what's available in our company. And, um, yeah, yeah. And some people think that, man, being a chef would be great, right? The food network is just sensationalized. The food, oh, this yeah, is great. Right, right. I'll spend a day with the chef first and let's see, you'll see what their day is like and <laughs> see if you still want to be, uh, see if you still want to do that. Get everything you need for your operation with Smithfield Culinary. Their extensive portfolio lets you serve up a wide variety of proteins to keep your patrons happy. Choose from Smokin' Fast, which lets you add barbecue to your menu without adding a pit master to your payroll. Or browse their margarita offerings, encompassing everything you need for pizza toppings, plus a variety of specialty Italian meats like capicola, prosciutto, and salami. Finally, serve what you love with Smithfield, which includes everything from bacon to hot dogs to deli meats and so much more. For the products and solutions to keep your operation running strong, visit smithfieldculinary.com. Our audience is comp is a pretty diverse audience. We have independent owner operators. We have general managers. We have franchise operators. We have hotel um, managers with restaurant operations. It's pretty diverse. But being in this business, we have a tendency to be really close to our operation. Maybe it's it's sometimes difficult to take a step outside the front door and kind of put our guest hat on. Let me ask you to visualize an experience in one of your restaurants as if you were the guest. Can you describe to us what the scene is, the vibe, the ambiance, the service, the food quality, as if you were a guest and not someone so close to being senior VP of any of your concepts? What would your guests say about their experience? And if you could just describe to us what you're striving to achieve, if you're meeting those goals from that objective viewpoint. Does that make sure. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, well, first we, we measure everything we do. I'll just say that. So we, we have a, uh, we really track our, uh, star ratings and our ratings through our open table system and all of our feedback. So, mm -hmm. so we know we're doing a good job. I'll kind of start from that side. We know our people, we have really great scores and, and, and we're doing those things and find our opportunities to fix them. But yeah, as you're pulling up to the restaurant, I want to be, uh, it starts with, uh, what does the outside of the restaurant look like? Right. How, how is the, what is it? What's going on there? You know, Curb we, we appeal. do. Is yeah, more curb. curb appeal. Yeah, right. Yeah, we want our managers to do uh, perimeter checks every day as part of our opening checklist and mm -hmm. making sure that starts the second you drive up to the restaurant. So you know the facilities tight, clean. Uh, if there's valet, how does that valet welcome me? You know, I want to be welcomed, and and that experience starts as soon as you open your car door. You know, as far as I'm concerned. So. Uh, yeah, you get to the front door, again, sparkling facilities, but you should be met uh, like a guest in the home. That's what we're trying to do. It, sure. welcome, welcome people into our restaurants. And I want to be welcomed into the restaurant. So a friendly face um, up front, very welcome, uh, not hiding behind a host stand, you know, with a clipboard, you know, or staring at a computer screen. I want that personal connection as soon as I enter the restaurant. So, so we get that. And then, um, it's the ambiance and the feel and the energy of the restaurant is so important to me. Um, that's in every little detail, right? So I always think food tastes better, uh, right? When you got the right music, you're with the right company, and uh, you have the 
uh, you're in a comfortable environment with the lighting splattering and and the music's going right. It's not too hot. It's you know maybe the windows are open and you're hearing the energy of the city you know, creating that energy. Um, and that was just already going to set the tone for what then is actually the star of the show is what you're going there to do. You're going there to be with your friends, family, mm -hmm. and eat and drink, you know, a high quality product. So expect a very high quality product on a plate. Absolutely uh, true. On center of the plate, we've, uh, I, I, uh, there's, there's more to value than just price. So, so that's really after you've had your food and, and my beverage, I want to push away from that table. That's the moment of truth. Right. That's the that's the value perception to me. Everybody wants not just about how much it costs. Uh, it was about your experience. And, and I found I'm willing to pay. I'm willing to pay good money for an awesome experience. Uh, sometimes even mediocre food, you know, is, with the whole experience is right, uh, really turns into a nice evening. But but we strive for excellence in both food, beverage and hospitality. And, and that's what I expect when I when I when I go to those restaurants and. Uh, yeah, so pushing away from the table, um, getting that, I got a really great bang for my buck. Everybody's happy in my party. It's great. And then full circle, leaving the restaurant again with a a warm face, saying, well, thank you so much. Look forward to having you back. Uh, some sort of interaction leaving the restaurant, not just right. a... A welcome back a, is so important. Absolutely. A sincere yeah. thank you and a welcome back is makes you feel like you're a, a regular or a special VIP type guest, even if it's your first time visit. And you everybody, know that's clearly what we're striving for. Everybody's a VIP. That's one of our philosophies and everybody wants to feel important and, and yep. we want to make that happen for everybody. And, yeah, so. How is the, uh, the labor crisis affecting your restaurant group right now? And what, what are some of your challenges? What are some of your solutions? I mean, how are you dealing with that, especially with your ambitious growth plan in mind? Sure. Yeah. Um, we do have a good reputation. So I like to think, I know that the challenges we're having, I can I only imagine and really empathize and, and for our other restaurant brethren out there, you know, I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's really difficult. So no doubt. I, I know we we get a lot of uh, of cream of the crop as far as that goes, which we're again very fortunate. But it's been one of our biggest challenges, you know. So really, we've had to. Uh, we don't want ever want that to slow us down. So we've gotten creative. Uh, yeah, our we've had to raise uh, our our minimum pay thresholds. You know, we we've done that. Um, our labor has gone up significantly. Um, we have learned though how to do more with less so you become more efficient and and kind of the new normal if you will of how we're going to run our restaurants and tighten those up tighten up our operations and be more productive that's one way to attack that um but recruiting uh is something that we're really focused on right now and how to do that the different angles there's so many different angles now to to um, avenues to recruit uh, it's getting in the right lane. It's making sure we're getting getting the right uh, the right uh, fit for our for our company, right? And uh, but at this point, um, we are looking for uh, personality and the culture side of people. We can teach people how to serve. You can teach people how to clean fish and make soup. Or, yes. You know that. You know we need. We're hiring for uh, good yes. people. Yeah, sure. that's what. That's really what we're looking for now. So we're mm -hmm. we're strong enough and a big enough company that we can take the time to train on some of the technical skill. We're really looking for just great attitudes and just some really great genuine people uh, that we can develop. You know, really helps us. So, um, but we have a lot of options too. So we're able to hit a lot of different categories and skill levels because we have restaurants from very casual all the way up to fine dining. So, so we have a lot of little avenues we can plug different people into so your organization is large enough where there's leverage there but Correct. still rising food and labor costs mean shrinking margins how are you maintaining margins even with the leverage that you have yeah yeah we've done a pretty significant price increase um over the over the last couple of years mm -hmm. uh, has really been one way the other way um so that kind of affects the guests, right? So, but the other, we, we look internally also 
And for the last year and a half, we've been uh, conducting what we're calling deep dives into our concepts, right? So we're diving in deep into all of our little uh, concepts to find, to make sure we're on brand, to make sure the DNA of the restaurant is right, um, what makes that restaurant tick. And then we're going at it uh, from the uh, menu engineering side, right? What are, what, are, what are we getting credit for? Mm -hmm. Should we reduce, we learned a lot through the pandemic of reducing some menu items and, and how to best, uh, I mean, we were, we were all kind of out of position, so to speak. I mean, everybody in the world was, but, uh, but we learned so much about really what, what we got credit for. Could we do more with less? and how to uh, organize our teams. So we took that now into everyday life and somewhat doubled down on, on some of these concepts. So this menu engineering and this uh, product engineering is a big deal. And we've been doing that with a lot of, uh, and it's really been the success of, of maintaining some of these, uh, some of the restaurants that we have, uh, maybe just one or two of those concepts. You know, we, we have some, uh, Ocean Prime is our big workhorse brand here at Cameron Mitchell Restaurants. And, um, that one was, uh, that's our high end seafood concept, seafood steak concept that, um, really was very successful. And everybody came out, uh, when everybody was allowed to leave their house, right? They came out and had a bunch of money in their pocket and, and wanted to go eat and dine. So they came to Ocean Prime. You know, Forget so. their troubles. Absolutely. A beautiful experience. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Bring it yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the deep dives and really uh, taking a look internally, what can we do to still again, maintain that value for our guests? And yeah, you got to stay. We didn't read, you can't recoup all of it. So those days are, those days are gone, but uh, we're going to stay, we'll be creative and we're not, we're not going to back down. You know, we'll, we'll keep pushing. You're touching on a really important point because there are a lot of operators out there that have raised prices and there is a ceiling where suddenly the value proposition kind of flips the other way. And now the guest feels like, uh, you know, I really can't afford to pay that much or I don't think the value is there. And now that with short staffing, restaurants can't afford to or can't deliver the type of hospitality and service that the guest has come to expect, yet the prices are higher. So that is a big challenge right now, maintaining the value. And there's a point where you can't raise prices anymore, even though our prices for food and labor are going up. Is there any you know, yeah. ideas that you have for that? Most definitely. That's where I said, I was, uh, yeah, it, no room for error, right? Yeah. I mean, we have to no margin for error. We have to execute at a very high level. Um, and that's what's expected of us. And there's really not much excuse that, that can be made to not do that. Uh, so that's our first goal. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to keep driving that home with our guests. And we use a company called, uh, it's a RMS. It's a revenue management, you know, company that, that helps us. It's kind of the, uh, Kind of the money ball to uh, menu pricing, if you will, right? Uh, so, so they help us measure um, some of that resistance that you're talking about. You know, so we are very strategic in raising prices. Uh, it's not just back in the old days; it'd be, hey, let's add two dollars to every entree, right? And sure. raise. It. It's not like that anymore. No, it can't be. It's a strategy and it's a science, really. It really is, and they help us do that. So we take our knowledge and, and but put it with them, and they help us put a science to it uh, where we can see where maybe guests are trading off for certain things. Are we selling less appetizers now per guest, or or are they buying? Did we raise too high, and now they're just getting one martini instead of two martinis, right? Um, but really honestly the, the resistance we don't see too much resistance right now you know we're not seeing that uh from time to time if we don't execute that's really the only time you'll see that in any of our feedback but but for the most part i think people are willing the, the category that we're in i think people are willing to uh willing to pay that price they understand what they're getting you know so uh you gotta be creative though yes at some point uh, we, we won't be able to keep going. I mean, what are we going to pay a hundred dollars for a steak? I mean, it's, you know, you know, for a, 
I remember the days in this company we would uh, argue and worry about taking the price of a fillet over twenty dollars for a for a eight ounce fillet, right? Now Dude, we're trying to right. we're trying to keep it under sixty dollars now, right? <laughs> like it's like really crazy what's happened over the last twenty years. Yeah, um, back in uh, nineteen ninety seven, I opened my first steakhouse, and I remember those prices the way they used to be. Right. And and now we're there where they're at, and it's yeah, I mean it's it's what happens and inflation is happening to everyone i mean everyone's feeling it at the gas pump and in the supermarket but they walk into a restaurant and they're used to paying x for a steak and suddenly it's now y and unless that entire experience is extraordinary you know how it is you gotta deliver like you said on the whole experience it's about execution it is it's execution and it's everywhere and it's affecting everything we're doing right um you know we'll uh we're we're looking at uh that's in every commodity, right? We build restaurants too, so all that construction costs up. Everything, everything is, everything's been more expensive for us, right? So we have to find ways to make that work. And and even though our profitability as percentage is a little bit down, we keep driving those sales. And dollar wise, our our profitability is still headed in the right direction. Right. As long as you got the market share that keeps increasing, and you're filling your seats, and you know you're maximizing all your productive assets. What Correct. can you do? And I'll tell you, really, yeah. the other little secret that we do is it goes back again to our culture and philosophy. Kind of a broken record here, but it works in every angle. Yeah. Our relationship with our purveyors, uh, we, they are our partners in business. So all of the, uh, everybody from any small wares company uh, to our broadliner, to our, our uh, meat and fish providers, all those all those companies, they're our partners in business. Yes, they and, mm-hmm. and they really helped us. And, you know, the, the landlords we had in our in our uh, cities that we do business, uh, they're our partners in business. And they, they helped us get through uh, that very difficult time and loaned us trucks to move our products. And we had to empty out the restaurants and helped us. They were out of position as well, you know, during this tough time. And, yeah, everyone uh, pulled together and it was all we could do. That's all I could, you know. That's all you could ever ask for. Everybody did anything that was necessary, and but they, uh, in good times and bad times, right? So th- that partnership and that foundation, um, we uh, has really just has been one of the secrets over the over the my 27 years here in the company is uh, very vital. And like I said, that we we treat them as our associates and our our family as well. They're they're our partners in business. So you know, there's right. a huge. Thank you for sharing that, Chuck. Um, there's a huge difference between a company's mission statement and what their culture is really all about. And it's it's easy to just throw up a mission on the wall and you might read it once or tell people to read it once. But unless it's deeply practiced and embraced from top down and bottom up and all that sort of thing, it doesn't really become a culture. Tell us about how you create a culture and how you sustain that culture over time, especially as you grow larger and larger and larger. The certain core philosophies stay the same, but you got to maintain that consistent culture. Can you speak to that? Sure. Yeah, doing it consistently is uh, non-negotiable for Cameron. You know, I mean, that's mm-hmm. Thank that you. was his first. That was his first mission um, when he started this company. Coming up, uh, we're. 29 years right now, we'll be celebrating 30 years in our company next year. Awesome. Uh, that was Congratulations. A, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, that was the first thing he did. That was the first thing. He spent, you know, a month locked in his apartment and writing out the culture and philosophy and, and knew he wanted to have a multi restaurant, multi concept restaurant group uh, that was based on culture and philosophy, right? Not just business and the bottom line. Sure. Um, Right. So really, it started in a little apartment here in Columbus, Ohio, 30 years ago. Um, and like I said, he's relentless about it. Um, but you really don't get the benefit of the philosophy if you're not you're not entitled to it if you're not acting the philosophy. Is that, does that make sense? You know, it, it absolutely like, does. Absolutely. You have to display the culture to be, you know, mm-hmm. to the benefits of it. Yeah. Own it, display it. and practice it every day so that it rubs off on everyone and that it is like you said non-negotiable this is who we are this is what we stand for this is what we want our perception by the guests to be and it creates a brand unto itself i think there's such power to that thought we have an internal brand 
New yeah. York around. You know, we're we're great people yeah. delivering genuine hospitality. That's what we do. That's how we are labeled. And and I think people know that. And that starts to take off. You know, we're we we are we're we need to thrive. We've been able to thrive through all these difficult times because we're so driven to give back to our community and our, our purveyors. And even through all these difficult times, everybody's in, we've still managed to keep all those, all those things in line. And, and we don't do anything that's going to jeopardize one of those arms of our, of our company and our, again, our, our communities and, and all of our, all the people that, that we do business with. Very important to keep those all in balance as we do that. And just in general, everybody knows our little fun sayings that we have a lot of fun, little quirky sayings that are inside, you know, and that's what mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it takes people some time to get used to that. You picked up on the associates and we talk about making raving fans and uh, we talk yeah. about, you know, really uh, being, being better tomorrow than we were today and, you know, better today than we were yesterday. That's all we can do, right? Is just try to be. My goal every day to wake up is just to impact someone's life somehow, some way, positive impact to make someone better. What can I do today to make someone better at their job um, or make someone's experience a little bit better? And, and when uh, when people start to see that that's a real thing and like this is you choose your attitude, right? Like you wake up in the morning and that's one of our attitude, attitude, attitude. Right. Right, right on. You choose that. When you're looking in the mirror in the morning, you can have a bad attitude. You can be approaching your day a certain way. And and we don't really go for that necessarily. Everybody has bad day, right? Everybody gets upset, right? Well, is it something is it something we've done? So if we see that, we'll add, we'll go towards so hey, are you having a tough day? What can I do for you? Have we done something? Is is there something that you need? What is why? Why is typically we ask that question a lot. We're curious, right? So why is that happening? And if it's something we're doing, we fix it right away and we and we show that we're engaged in that. And if it's something you've chosen to have a bad attitude that day, well, then we're going to ask you to fix it, right? Because another philosophy is the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So, uh, so those kind of go hand in hand, right? Like, you know, picking your attitude and, and really the company is just so much bigger than any one of us individually um, we try to uh, we try to build in that kind of thought and and just put a quality to everything we're doing not just the food beverage but quality of quality of hospitality to our guests and our associates right and it's all display it's all walking the walk you gotta you gotta you can't just talk about it yet posting it on the wall and not doing anything right that's worse than having anything at all don't even put anything on the wall because Talking it and not doing it can be very detrimental to your company. I think you just summed up the secret sauce of truly great restaurants right there with what you said. And I yeah. hope that our audience caught every word because that really strikes home and it's what, what it's all about and why we're here. So I really, really thank is. you. Thank yeah. you so much uh, for being on the Restaurant Rockstars podcast, Chuck, and sharing thank your insights and your expertise and just your passion for this business. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Well, everyone, thanks again for tuning in. That was the Restaurant Rockstars podcast. We can't wait to see you in the next episode. So please stay tuned and stay well. Chuck, thank you so much for being with us. We learned so much about developing an amazing company culture, promoting people from within, your mentorship program, the culinary school, the pass the plate program. These are all super powerful ideas for our audience. Thanks again to the audience for tuning in. Can't wait to see you next time. Stay tuned. Listen, I am a huge believer that service is your restaurant's greatest competitive advantage. But we all know that service takes time and commitment, dedication. Well, what if there was a training tool, a single tool that was completely customized to your restaurant brand, your menu? Let's start with photos of the plate presentations, ingredients, romance notes, allergens, everything that's important that your staff need to know to present and bring to life your menus for your guests. That includes your wine and beer list, specialty cocktails, everything at their fingertips. Imagine in the back of house that cooks, your new prep cooks, or anyone can instantly look at the photos, a list of ingredients with prep times and cooking steps, all the important things to produce each dish to perfection. Imagine there's also table 
table layouts of every dining space in your restaurant with table numbers and even seat numbers because we all know how important it is to deliver the right dish to the right guest. This is a tool designed to enhance hospitality in your restaurant, not replace it. Learn more at servenow.com. That's S-R-V-N-O-W dot com. Check it out. Thanks for listening to the the Restaurant Restaurant Rockstars Rockstars Podcast. Podcast. For lots of great resources, head over to restaurantrockstars.com. See you next time.